Welcome, brethren, to another Sunday evening service. We are extremely grateful to you for joining us to worship through Mission Life Grenada, whether on our YouTube or Facebook platforms. Please do share the link with all your contacts. I am Samuel Roberts, and I will lead you through our service this evening. But before we begin, let us offer a word of prayer to God. Dear most kind and loving Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight with nothing but thanks in our hearts. Thank you for all you have done for us and will continue to do for us all the days of our lives. We ask of you this evening to please bless this program and help it to be a very meaningful one and that all our viewers and listeners may be lifted heavenward. Guide us and protect us, O Lord, and help us to keep on the right, the right path of life so that we may be with you someday in your heavenly kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Join us at this time as we lift the name of Jesus with our songs of praise with our choristers, Sister Carmela Sincere, Sister Marlon Charles, and Brother Ricardo Philip, accompanied by Pastor Joseph Bowen on the piano. A pleasant good evening to all our online viewers. Please join us now as we have a song service. Our first hymn in the Adventist hymnal is hymn number 248. Oh, how I love Jesus. That none can bear me 
426. I shall see the king. On the golden strand, and with him shall ever stay. In his glory, I shall see the King, and forever endless praises sing. Twas on Calvary, Jesus died for me. I shall see the King. So. Glory throne, where the heaven comes a night. With my Lord once reign, I shall ever reign in the glory land of light. In his glory, I shall see the King and forever endless praises sing. Twas on Calvary. Died for me, I shall see the King someday. I shall see the King, all my tributes bring, and shall look upon his face. Then my song shall be how he ransomed me and has kept me by his grace. see the King and forever endless praises sing. It was on Calvary Jesus died for me. I shall see the King someday. Amen. And there will be joy, joy by and by as we sing our last hymn, 430. Oh, there'll be joy when the work is done, joy when the reapers gather home, bring in the sheaves that set us on to the new. Jerusalem. Joy, joy, there'll be joy by and by. Joy, joy, where the joys never die. Joy, joy, for the day, joy at night, when the workers gather home. Sweet are the songs that we hope to sing. Our hearts shall bring praise in forever, Christ our King, in the new Jerusalem. Joy, joy, there'll be joy by and by. Joy, joy, where the joys never die. Joy, joy, for the day, joy at night, when the work has come. Pure are the joys that await us there. Many the golden mansions where Jesus Himself taught their prepare in the new Jerusalem. Joy, joy, there'll be joy by and by. Joy, joy. Joys never die. Joy, joy for the day, joy at night, when the work has gone This evening we are.
are continuing our spiritual revival series on the seven seals of Revelation. The focus this evening is on the 144,000. We now invite Elder Ra Roberts to intercede on our behalf. Let us pray. Almighty Father, creator of this universe, we humble bow before you, acknowledging, Lord, that you are our God and you deserve our praise and honor. In a very special way that God, we are very sorry for the way in which we have went ahead today for falling short of God. And so the Lord at this time, we ask for your forgiveness. And we pray the Lord that you may have mercy upon us. We ask the God that you may create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. Cast away the God all malice, all unselfishness, anything that Lord that is not of you, any besetting sins of God, we ask that you may pardon and forgive us. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for our lives spared. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity whereby you have given to us to be part of this platform to proclaim your word and to evangelize and to share the good news. We pray the Lord that whatever, whatever will be said and done here this evening, Lord, that many hearts will be touched and rich and men, the God may, um, men, women, boys and girls may surrender their life to you. We pray in a, in a very special way for this program, all those who will be participating, taking part, and also the Lord for the preacher, the evangelist, the one who will be proclaiming your name. We pray the Lord that a double portion of your Holy Spirit presence may be with him and help the Lord that whatever will be said and done this, this evening would be a means, the Lord, of helping someone to reach out and to cry out and to say, Lord, I surrender it all to you. We pray the Lord for the church and the church family, everyone. We pray the Lord for the online viewers, all those of God who will be listening. We pray the Lord that they may eventually give their heart to you before it is eternally too late. Bless the young ones, the young people in our church and in, in our village, in our communities. Bless the Lord those uh, God who would have gone cold. And uh, someday the Lord we pray that they may see the need to return to the fold of safety before it is eternally too late. So we pray the Lord for the one that will be presenting the message. We pray the Lord that may continue to empower him with your Holy Spirit. And whatever the God will be said and done here, may all of us, the Father, benefit and learn something. Take charge, take control of the service. Be with the online viewers, everyone, and the one that God that will be you know, giving that message. May our hearts be touched and prick. And when it shall come in glory, save everyone we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for joining us through your prayers. Now, as we all know, music do play a very vital part in our worship to Christ. So at this time, we will praise God as we listen to Sister Monique Maxween as she sings.
or what sweet heavenly music. Thank you very much. We were indeed blessed. At this time, I invite you, brethren, to get your Bibles as we read the scripture reading for tonight. And it is taken from Revelation chapter 7, verses 1 to 4 and verse 9. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty-four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne, and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palms in their hands." Our hearts will now be blessed with a special rendition in song.
Amen, sister. We were indeed truly blessed. The time has come for the main meal. This spiritual food will come from our president, the president of the Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. He is no other than Dr. Clinton Lewis. Let us welcome him as he brings to us the spoken word. Pleasant good evening to all our listeners. Thank you so very much for tuning in to this evening's evangelistic series. I pray that God will tremendously bless you as we go through today the second part of the sixth seal. I want to also express our heartfelt thanks to you for your financial support to uh, our programs that you view from week to week. Our sermon this evening is entitled, Who Shall Be Able to Stand? Let us pray. Our Father and our God, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for the Holy Spirit guides us into truth. As we reflect on chapter 7 of the book of Revelation this evening, we pray, dear Father, that your spirit will be our teacher and guide. Help each of us to understand clearly the message. Guide us by thy spirit to apply it appropriately to our experience. We commit ourselves to you now. We place this summon in your hand. Speak for me. Speak through me. May we all be tremendously blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In our last sermon, on the seven seals, we establish that we are presently living under the sixth seal. And the sixth seal covers the period from the end of of the dark middle ages and will continue until the coming of Jesus. The sixth seal portrays the lost or wicked as running to the rocks and to the cave and weeping and lamenting, praying to be buried under the rocks, to be buried in the caves so that they would be able to escape the wrath of the Lamb and the face of Jesus that they had rejected and despised. While in the state of anguish, the cry burst out saying, For the great day of his wrath is come. And who shall be able to stand? Revelation chapter 6 and verse 11. This question ends the sixth seal. But it is of such importance that the Apostle John is given the answer to this question and he reveals it to us in chapter 7 before proceeding to the seventh seal. Theologians refer to chapter 7 as a parenthesis or an interlude because it breaks the flow of the events with the seals. The prophet Malachi ask a similar question in regards to the second coming of Jesus in Malachi chapter 3 and verse 2. As the lost will ask then. So here it is. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 2. Quote, But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire. And like fuller's soap. In reading John's account, and the one here in Malachi, the word stand jumps out at us. Malachi asks, Who shall stand when he appeareth? The wicked would also ask, For the great day of his wrath is come, and whom shall be able to stand? The question is relevant to you and me, my friends, because we are living under the sixth seal right now. This is very, a very, very sobering question. You need to ask yourself, 
What is my present standing before God? You need to ask yourself, if Jesus comes in my lifetime, will I be able to stand? In the book of Luke, chapter 21 and verse 36, we find this admonition to us living in this period prior to Jesus' return. Quote, Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that he may be accounted worthy to escape all those things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. What does it mean to stand? It is to remain in Jesus Christ steadfast, settled, firm, solid, unmovable. The answer John provides to the question who shall be able to stand of Revelation chapter 6 and verse 17 also gives us a very clear indication of what is required to be able to stand. Revelation chapter 7 answers the question. Revelation chapter 7, we're going to read from verse 1 through to verse 4. It says, And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on the tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed an hundred and forty-four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. The answer to the question raised by the lost is this. The 144,000 who were sealed by God are the ones who will be able to stand. Let me repeat that. The answer is, the 144,000 who were sealed by God are the ones who will be able to stand. In Revelation chapter 7, verses 1 to 4, John takes us back to the sealing that takes place before Jesus sets loose the wind of strife before the close of human probation to salvation. It's a special ceiling. Angels are holding back the wind, representing destructive forces, so that the ceiling can be completed and no more chance for salvation will be available. How many people will be sealed? The Apostle John tells us, in Revelation chapter 7 and verse 4, John heard, and I want you to pay very close attention to what is happening here, because John would hear, and then eventually John will see. So uh, in the first group, John says, in Revelation chapter 7 and verse 4, John heard the number of those being sealed to be 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Now, my friends, this is symbolic. The number is symbolic because the 12 tribes mentioned from which they come don't exist anymore. And the tribes' names are different from that listed in any of the Old Testament listing of the tribes. And even the order is different. The number 144,000 stands for the totality of God's end-time people. So in verse 9, John saw. Remember we just said he heard the number. Now he sees. God shows him a picture of the people. So John sees the same sealed ones and describes them this way. Verse 9, After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, 
of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Hallelujah. This is similar to John's experience in Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 10, John says, I heard the voice of a trumpet. Then he says, I turn to see the voice that spoke with me. And then he said that he saw, that's chapter 1, verses 12 and 13, that he saw seven golden candlesticks with Jesus in the midst. So hearing and then seeing, and that's exactly what happened here. He heard the number 144,000, and then he saw the people, and he said it was a great multitude that nobody can number. The concept of God placing a mark upon his people goes back to the book of Ezekiel chapter 9 and uh, reading from verse 2 through to verse 6. God's people had fallen into great apostasy. They fell so low that God referred to the action as being abominable. Ezekiel chapter 8 and verse 6. They went as far as to be worshipping the sun towards the east. Ezekiel chapter 8 and verses 16 and 17. God had enough. So in Ezekiel's vision, God sent a man with a writer's inkhorn and he was commanded to do the following. Set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh. And that cry for all the abominations uh, that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others he said in my hearing. Go ye after him through the city. And smite. Let not your eyes spare. Neither have ye pity. End of quote. Ezekiel chapter 9 verses 4 and 5. By virtue of the mark that God sent to place on the people who were loyal to him. By virtue of that mark, they were to be saved from destruction. Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 2 through to verse 6. Those saved from destruction belonged to God. They had no part in the wickedness of the day. Instead, the Bible says that they sighed and they cried out against it. Ezekiel chapter 9 and verse 4. Dr. John Paulin an Adventist New Testament scholar, helps us to understand how sealing is used in relation to humans in the Bible. And so I read a quote from him, coming from his article, The Meaning of the Seals and Sealing Revelation 7. Quote, A more symbolic use of the word sealing can be found when you are talking about people. Sealing, a person could be a sign of Ownership. Exodus 21, 2 to 6, Ephesians 1, 13, 4, 30, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19, and Revelation 14 and verse 1. Or it could be a sign of protection. Ezekiel chapter 9 and uh, verses 4 through to 6. He continues: in early Judaism, sealing was associated with circumcision. In 2nd century Christianity, sealing was associated with baptism. So the sealing of people by God would be a sign that they belong to God. Ephesians 1 verse 13, chapter 4 and verse 30, 2 Timothy 2 19, Revelation 9 and verse 4. And that God knows the ones who belong to him in a spiritual sense. Sealing validates where a person stands with God. Hallelujah. So in Revelation 7, God is sealing those who belong to him. He knows them. He seals them so that they can be protected from the fearful destruction and the wrath of God that falls on the wicked before the return of Jesus According to Revelation chapter 7 and verse 1. How are people sealed, you may ask. The Apostle Paul helps us with this. 
In the book of Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13, we read the following. In whom he also trusted. After that, he heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also, after that, he believed. He was sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Revelation 7, 14 states it this way. Have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. In other words, they repented of their sins. They surrendered their lives to Jesus Christ, who then justified them, then covered them with his white robe of righteousness. They are now in possession of salvation. Revelation 7 and verse 10. When an individual in earnest surrenders to God, then God seals him or her with the Holy Spirit. They belong to God. They receive the seal of ownership. The Holy Spirit controlling our lives is the indication that we are sealed. That's why Paul warns us in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30 of the following. Quote, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby he has sealed unto the day of redemption. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit because you will not be sealed. So many people are hearing the Spirit speaking to them to surrender their lives to God, but they are constantly resisting. This is dangerous, my friends. Very dangerous. Because it is the Spirit of God that pleads with us when they hear the Word of God telling us this is the way. Walk in it. Pleading with us to give our lives to God. And when we keep resisting, 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 we are putting ourselves in a place where eventually we can grieve the Holy Spirit. And once you have done this, my friends, you cannot be sealed. So many people who gave their lives to God they hear the Spirit telling them from God's Word that they are disobeying certain commands of God and yet they are refusing to bring their lives in conformity. This is also very dangerous. I was in the island of San Andres in Colombia. I was preaching there and a lady sent to call me. And when I went, she says, she's a Protestant. She says to me that uh, the Holy Spirit speaks to me directly. And I said, okay. And then she gave me some experiences uh, where she has been in room with people uh, in prayer sessions and the spirit will speak to her and tell her, speak to that person, speak to that person. This is what is going on in their lives. And so she said to me, I heard you preaching up the hill and I asked the Holy Spirit about what is happening up there. And the Holy Spirit said to me, you want truth? You've been always asking for truth. What is being preached up there is truth. Follow it. When I got goosebumps. And I said to her, what else can I say? If you tell me the Spirit of God told you that what you are hearing up there is truth, to go and follow it, then all you have to do is obey. And then she starts to back back. And then the crusade ended. We left. And she never came forward. So this is a dangerous thing. When one can say, the Spirit of God has spoken to me. The Spirit of God has shown me that this is right. This is truth. And the person fails to continue to follow what the Spirit is pointing out. Such a person can grieve the Spirit of God. Even though before they had, they had salvation, they were sealed by the Spirit. My friends, the Spirit of God can leave them. So many people are backslidden. And are hearing God calling, return, return, return. But they are lingering and halting. My friends, that's a dangerous path to trod. Because you can end up, my friends, grieving the Spirit of God. I plead with you to heed the words of Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 15. It says, while it is said today, if you will hear his voice, 
harden not your hearts as in the provocation. My friends, God says today it is time to give it all to Jesus. Aren't you tired, my friends, of chasing pretty rainbows? Aren't you tired of spinning round and round? Aren't you tired wrapped up in shattered dreams of your life? It is time to lay down your life at the feet of Jesus. I encourage you this evening to give it all. Give it all. Give it all to Jesus, my friends. The sign of a real or genuine Christian is a person who is sealed by the Holy Ghost. The sealing that Revelation 7 speaks about happens to people living before, just before Jesus returns. And before the terrible time of trouble. People who will go through the time of trouble and behold Jesus coming in glory and splendor. Such individuals would have been already sealed unto salvation by the Holy Spirit. Just as Christians today are being sealed by the Holy Spirit when they surrender their life to God. God, however, God had referred to them in Revelation 7, 3 as servants of God. So they were God's possession. They already belonged to God. They were born again Christians. But in order to stand as they live through the wrath of God that is poured out on the wicked and as to stand against Satan's last spiritual assault, they will receive that special seal of protection. That uh, Revelation chapter 7 verses 1 to 4 talks about. The inspired writer, Ellen White, described this end time sealing thus, quote, it is not any seal or mark that can be seen, but a settling into the truth, both intellectually and spiritually, so that they cannot be moved. Hallelujah! The faith of the martyrs who cried out under the altar of the fifth seal is here manifested again. The Christians living here will rather die than sin against God. Their minds, their heart, the seat of the moral decision in the frontal lobe is totally locked in with God. Settle into the truth, both intellectually and spiritually, so that they cannot be moved. In Revelation chapter 13, there is... It is revealed that another mark will be taking place at the end time that is received by the lost. So we just saw that God will be sealing his people, marking his people. But at the same time, as we come to the end, the devil will also be marking people. It is a mark, it is called the mark of the beast in the right hand or in the forehead, thereby giving allegiance and wholehearted commitment to the beast and worshiping him and his image. Revelation chapter 13 and uh, from verse 15 through to 17. This time is still ahead of us. God's still people will be severely tested, but they will not yield to the beast of Revelation chapter 13. They will worship only the true God they will not worship the image of the beast. They will not worship the beast. Revelation 14 shows us the seal, the 144,000, and the character. We get a view of what God's people will be like just before the second coming of Jesus Christ. So let's read, come with me to Revelation chapter 14. And we are reading from verse 1 through to verse 5. John says, and I looked, and lo, a lamb stood among Zion, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having the Father's name written in their foreheads. Hallelujah! No, when we talk about the forehead, we are talking about the frontal lobe, the center of decision making, the heart or the mind of an individual. 
And to have the Father's name written in their forehead is to have the character of the Father. So they have the character of Jesus Christ. Verse 2 says, And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with the harps. And they sang as it were a new song, before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song, but the hundred and forty and four thousand, which were redeemed from the earth. Verse 4. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. What God is showing John is that those who are sealed by this representative number of 144,000, when they come down to the end, when the same time that the beast would be marking his people, these people would remain virgins. They would never get themselves corrupted with the false doctrines and teachings, with the false traditions that would be upheld. They would not worship according to these traditions and these false teachings. Instead of that, that group would, be, would sigh and cry for the abominations that had been done in the land by the beast and the followers of the beast. They profess, my friends, a pure faith. So verse 4 continues. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. Oh, they were so committed to Christ that they were willing to die for Christ. The total allegiance is to Christ and to Christ alone. Nothing would derail them. In Christ alone, they placed their trust and they were willing to die for him. And then the Bible says, These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God, unto the Lamb. And verse 5 says, That in their mouth was found no guile. So my friends, these were loyal to God. Through all the falsehood, through all the threats of death for those who will not worship the beast or the image worship or the image of the beast. Oh, my friends, they would stand like, like a bulwark. They'll stand up for the God. My friends, they'll stand up keeping the commandments of God, keeping the Sabbath of God that calls them to worship the creator God and not the beast or the image of the beast. And so, my friends, this is why, like the saints in the book of Ezekiel chapter 9, verses 4 to 6, they receive God's seal. Uh, they don't only say that they belong to God, but God's special seal is to protect them from what is ahead of them, the wrath of God that is to fall upon the wicked. During the time that the wrath of God is poured out on the wicked. When the angels cease to hold back the winds of strife. And the seal are protected. They stand safe like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the raging fire. They stand. When the devil would come in like a flood through the beast of Revelation 13 and his followers. That's in the end time. God protects the sealed ones, my friends, they stand. When Jesus appears in power and glory and the wicked are running to the rocks and to the caves, the sealed will be protected and they will be shouting, this is our God. We have waited for him and he will save us. Hallelujah. They stand. They stand not only through the wrath of God and the fury of the beast and his host, but in Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 through to 10, John was shown the sealed standing with Jesus, victorious. Hallelujah. And so verse 9 says, After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation and tribe, people and language, they stand before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, symbolic of victory. Hallelujah. 
And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. I say, praise the Lord. Oh, beloved, it will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face. All sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. Life's day will soon be o'er. All storms forever past. We'll cross the great divide to glory safe at last. We'll share the joys of heaven. A hop, a home, a crumb. The tempter will be banished. We lay our burdens down. It will be worth it all. When we see Jesus, life's trials will seem so small. When we see Christ, one gleams of his dear face. All sorrows will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. My friends, as I end today, Jesus wants you to be able to stand if you're alive at his coming. The question is, if this is also your heart's desire, I want you to answer yes. 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 Very good. A lot of yes is going up. I am answering yes, yes. That is my desire. If I'm alive with Christ coming, I want to be among those that is shouting, this is our God. We are waiting for him. He will save us. Hallelujah. While the lost are running and crying and shouting, I want to be among the 144 uh, that are sealed. I want to be that great multitude that are sealed and praising and singing glory to the God. A lot of yes going up, my friends. It tells me that you want the same thing that God wants for you. But my friends, to accomplish this requires that we presently be surrendered to God without reservation and to daily be recommitting our lives to God. Which means, my friend, what Jesus wants for us right now. Jesus wants you to be able to stand now. So we have to be able to stand now. And so if we live up to the time, then God is going to give us a special ceiling so that we can stand true. Whatever is going to come across our path, the wrath of God and all the evil of, of Satan and his host. But today, God is calling on you. God is calling on me to so give our lives to him. Uh, to so be, be resolute you know, a decision to build such a relationship with him that we are right now willing to die rather than walk away from God. We're willing to die rather than live a life of sin. That's the call upon God upon your life right now. Jesus wants you to be able to stand now. So if this is your decision, please raise your hands. I'm raising both of mine. Because my friends, I want to live for God Every moment that he gives me breath. That's what God wants. Of every human being who walks this earth. And so I appeal to you my friend. If you have not yet given your life to Christ. Don't wait for tomorrow. You don't have tomorrow. Today is what you have. Now is what you have. Give your life to Christ now. And if you have been walking with your God. Oh my friends I want to encourage you. With all the gusto that I have. To day by day, recommit yourself to God and allow the Spirit of God that has sealed us to continue to walk in us so that God, when he looks down and he sees us, he can say, you are mine, you are mine, you are mine, you are mine. And if we come up, my friends, if we are living right at the end when the time of trouble the wrath of God, the plagues would be poured out. Then God is going to give us his special protection to stand because we will be settled in truth. Unmovable. Oh, may God help us today to be unmovable. 
Let us pray. Our Father and our God, oh, what courage and comfort we find in your word. What great assurance of God you have given to us that you are in absolute control of this world. You are in absolute control of the events that would lead to the end of this world. Oh, Father, we are so thankful for your love for your people. When we give our lives to you, we become yours in a special sense. And you claim us, you know, when we belong to you. And oh God, we are thankful for the Spirit of God that seals us when we make that absolute surrender. And that works in us day by day, sanctifying us, making us more and more like Christ so that we can reflect more and more his character. Oh yes, his character would be written in our minds. Oh Father, we pray for anyone today who have heard this message. And have not yet made a decision. Oh God help me to recognize. How serious is the time. And how urgent is the need. To surrender now. I pray for them dear God. Now as they cry out to you. That you would have mercy upon them. And help them to recognize. You never mock a sincere prayer. But 1 John 1 9. You are faithful and just to forgive. And to cleanse from all unrighteousness. So everyone crying out now. And saying Lord have mercy. Forgive them oh God. Give them the assurance they are forgiven. And Lord, fill them with your spirit. Seal them. And Lord, day by day, all of us, give us the power to walk before you reverently and soberly. Help us to live with a blessed hope daily, burning brighter and brighter in our heart. With every new day, oh God, let that blessed hope burn brighter and brighter in our heart. And we will see Jesus coming in the cause of glory to take his own. Oh, that the righteous will be victorious over death and the grave. No more devil to deal with. And so God, you would vindicate your people and bring your wrath and punishment upon the wicked. Thank you, God, for the decisions made today. Thank you, God, for your word to our hearts today. We praise you and we adore you and we glorify and magnify you. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. God bless you, saints. God bless you. Thank you so much, Dr. Clinton Lewis, for stirring our hearts and jolting us into action this evening. I pray that our lives will be changed, renewed hope. We all can take something from it and also use it in our daily lives. But just before we close with prayer, a few announcements. Join our prayer intercessors tomorrow night and Thursday night at 8 p.m. And also on Sabbath at 6 a.m. for an hour of prayer. Zoom ID and passcode 874-9040-9613. And the passcode 013803. Using the same ID and passcode, you can join the prayer intercessors between 12 noon and 1 p.m. on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. 40 days of prayer continues. You can receive the different Zoom ID and passcode for the daily prayer sessions from your pastor, prayer ministry's leader, or communication secretary. Here are the upcoming programs for Mission Live. Tuesday, Pastor's Corner at 11.30 a.m. and the rebroadcast will be at 8 p.m. Youth Live Unplugged on Friday at 7 p.m. Sabbath morning service at 9 a.m. followed by the Sabbath afternoon service at 4 p.m. Join us next Sunday night at 7 p.m. as we look at the opening of the seventh and final seal of Revelation. We will also cover the seven trumpets of Revelation at that time. In preparation for next Sunday service, kindly read Revelation chapters 8 and 9. Now let us pray. Our God and our Father, thank you for your many blessings you have bestowed upon us this evening. Thank you for using your servants in a mark and mighty way. Continue to grant unto us your grace and your mercy until we meet next Sabbath again. We pray all this in Jesus' name. 
Amen. We have been called to follow Christ. We are to preach, we are to teach, we are to fight. So where you Worship Him in all the nations, in all.